Hi, in this video, I'm looking at these problems here, calculating the final amount and interest gained for each compound interest investment. So we've got four different investments here that we're going to look at, and we're going to use our compound interest formula to do these. So let's get started with part A. So our compound interest formula is A equals P times 1 plus i to the power of n. So p is our principal. It's how much money we're starting with, which is $6,000 in this case. Little i is our interest rate per compounding period. So we've got 7% per annum for five years, and it doesn't tell us what the compounding period is, so we're going to assume that it's yearly. So we've got to divide this by 100 to turn it into a decimal, so we're going to divide by 100, and that gives us 0 0.07, and we would also have to divide this by how many times it happens each year, but it happens once per year, so there's not much point doing that divide. So we just get 0 0.07, and then n is how many compounding periods that we have all together. So we've got five years worth of compounding periods, and then we would multiply by how many times it happens each year, but this is happening annually, so it happens once per year, so there's no point multiplying by one. So now we can go and substitute into our rule. Our final amount that we're going to have, which is A, is going to be our principal, 6,000, multiplied by 1 plus our i, 0 0.07, all to the power of n, 5. So if we plug all of that into a calculator and get out our answer, we find out that the final amount is 8,000, a little bit neater, 8,000, four hundred and fifteen dollars and thirty one cents so that's our final amount now it also asks us for the interest gained so we started with six thousand dollars we ended with eight thousand dollars so our interest i is going to be that final amount minus of how much we started with our principal so if I have this much money, and I started with this much money, how much did I gain? So I is going to be $8,415.31 minus off 6000 So that means that our interest gained would be 2000 four hundred and fifteen dollars and thirty one cents so this is our interest gained and that's part C a uh, part a done so that's one question so let's have a look now at part B part B is a very similar question we have seven hundred and fifty dollars invested at eight point three percent each year for eight years so we'll go through the same process. We have our rule, A equals P, 1 plus I to the N, where P is how much we're starting with, 750. Little i is our interest rate, which is 8.3%, but I need that as a decimal, so I've got to divide it by 100. And then I would divide by how many times this is happening each year, but it's only happening once, so there's no point dividing by 1. So that gives us 0 0.083. And then n is how many compounding periods we have, which is 8 years worth of it happening each year. So multiply by 1. There's not much point doing that. Plug our numbers into our rule. A equals 750 times by 1 plus 0 0.083. All to the power of 8. And so that gives us that our final amount for our second investment is $1,419.34. Uh,
five cents. And then if we work out our interest gained, which is going to be how much we ended with, minus of how much we started with, we're going to have 1419.35 minus of 750. And so that's going to give us our interest gained of 600 and $69.35. So they're the two compounding annually. Just do it for each year questions. So now let's move on to part C and see how we do that one. So part C is going to be the same rule. It's still the same rule. We've got $2,760 invested at 3.7 percent per annum for four years this time with monthly rest so it's compounding monthly so we've got to work out how many times this happens so we go back to our rule a equals p outside of one plus i to the n so our principal is still the same how much we start with two thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars so we have 2760. Our little i is where it starts changing. We are investing at 3.7% per annum. So we've got 3.7%, which I need to divide by 100. But I also need to divide by how many times it happens per year. And we've got monthly rest, so it's compounding each month. And there are 12 months in a year. So we've also got to divide it by 12. So our little i is going to be 0 0.00308 and then with threes recurring. So there's threes forever after that point. And then we've got to work out n, which is how many times it compounds across the investment. So this investment is for four years. So we've got four years, and it happens 12 times per year, so we multiply by 12. So we've got 48. So now let's plug our numbers into our rule. A is going to be 2760 times by 1 plus 0 0.003083 recurring, all to the power of 48. And so we work this out and we get $3,199.53. And so then working out our final amount, which is still the same calculation, what I finished with minus of what I started with. So I've got $3,199.53. Minus of $2,760, which means that our interest gained, we gained $439.53. So now doing the same for our final part, part D. So D, we have $8,000 invested at 10% for six years with quarterly rests. So, same rule, A equals P, side of 1 plus I to the N. Our principal is still the number we're starting with, $8,000. Little I is going to be our interest rate, which was 10%, which we've got to divide by 100 to turn into a decimal. We've also got to divide it by how many times it happens per year. We have quarterly rests, and there are four quarters in a year. So we have to divide this by four. So our little i is going to be 0 0.025. And then working out n, we're doing this for six years. So we're going to have six, and then I'm going to multiply by how many times it happens each year. Again, we've got quarterly rests, 
So that happens four times each year. So we have an n of 24. So now plugging our numbers in, a is going to be 8,000 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.025 to the power of 24. And plugging that into a calculator, we get that our final amount was $14,469.81. And then working out how much interest we gained, which is how much we finished with, minus off how much we started with. So we have $14,469.81 minus off $8,000. And so that gives us an interest gained of $6,469.81. So there we go. We have four examples of using the compound interest rule. Two, where they're compounding annually, so we don't really need to play with our I and N because they are just going to be multiplied or divided by one. And then two examples where we're compounding more times each year. So we've got to divide or multiply by how many times that happens each year.